All right, thanks, Ron. Uh, yeah, today I think you'll find this interesting. I'm going to talk about uh, basically what does it cost to have an aged security and network infrastructure as you're developing your hybrid strategy, and what does that really cost in terms of ability to deliver uh, network operation security ops and really deliver that user that needs to work from anywhere. Uh, by users, we mean your customers, your employees, your supply chain, and they're accessing apps that are anywhere. But how do you apply uniform security policies? But more importantly, the other uh, thing we're going to talk about is how do you hard, tie hard financial numbers uh, to the controls you put in place and tie it to business risk the same using the same methodologies that insurance companies use. I think you'll find this uh, very interesting, uh, the fact that we can tie the controls, the frameworks, the business risk with security back numbers by the insurance industry. So this uh, just highlights uh, to set the, the track straight. We've got this hybrid infrastructure, which is highlighted here. Uh, you have people on the bottom component over here that might be in an office would may or may not have a hosting center, might have the, their data center in a hosting center. They've got remote employees. They possibly got factories or retail stores. Uh, they've got people working all over the world. They also have to control access to their information with customers, suppliers, business partners. And they got to get granular enough with their infrastructure that they can actually authenticate them in a common repository, uh, allow them to get to their uh, SaaS apps that make sense, like ServiceNow and Microsoft to collaborate in Salesforce, but also those public cloud environments that we're talking about, the AWS, the Amazons, and um, the Azures. Uh, how do you create an infrastructure uh, that can handle all that? And in a scenario that is kind of interesting is, say I've got an employee trying to work, he's at, uh, maybe he's at the uh, Easter or whatever, like we just had, and he's at his grandma's house and all of a sudden he has to access service now to issue a, to check on a ticket. And how do you put the security controls from his, between his grandma's computer and his valid credentials and this service now? So we've been seeing a lot of security principles evolve and controls evolve to try and keep up with that. Uh, examples would be used to use VPNs and verify and trust. Now we're at the zero trust model. I've got to understand the state of where the user, what type of device he's on. Is that a company owned device, a third party device? And I do conditional based access based on that. Then you've also, the regulations are now also pushing for point in time versus uh, going to continuous assessment of the security posture. And um, even the user awareness training because users are one of the largest uh, vulnerabilities in your enterprise, uh, that's even going in bad now. So that if, if something like CrowdStrike sees a user doing something that might be suspicious, like trying to grab credentials out of memory, it's gonna warn the user even that, hey, what are you doing this for? Why are you going to this site? So trying to get real time to protect the users. Uh, and then we've seen uh, insurance companies come out and recommend MFA on all your applications. And then they found that, well, MFA isn't all built equally and some MFA uh, requires, uh, it can be tricked. And so now they're saying we have to have phishing resistant MFA. And the end note, obviously we've talked about, uh, that's been a point of contention throughout the years. And we started with antivirus, which would have your, and then we went to, endpoint protection suites, which had things like whitelisting, where you could either go somewhere or not, very binary, but not very user-friendly. And that's evolved to the current state of where we are now with like EDR, where we have uh, companies like CrowdStrike and Sentinel One and Microsoft Defender that can uh, watch a series of events and determine if we potentially have a security event going on, like an, someone logs on to administrator to a device and now maybe tries to go somewhere they don't normally go or tries to move laterally, those types of things might indicate security. That's why security is so difficult. It's not one feed or one particular act, it's a series of acts. And then we're also trying to evolve this infrastructure to um, be able to support that use case, like I mentioned, where we have to be between the applications and the user, no matter where the user uh, resides. And the terminology here in the industry for that right now is the security service edge. And then the, inter the connection physically to the internet technology is called SD-WAN, that's network level. And those are coming together also. So that's the environment we're gonna talk about. And um, then because of all the challenges of security also, we've also now 
uh, you've seen the evolution of the SIM to collect all your logs, log collection, then automation with uh, tools that they call them SOAR, security orchestration on automation. And those solved some point problems. And that's the first step was automating a lot of the uh, particular events that happened over and over again. And that's one of the themes we'll talk about. And now we're talking about XDR, where it's a series of automations between uh, different domains of security. And uh, the, like, the, the lesson from all this is um, the hybrid SOC is probably the right answer for most organizations. And that's a combination of letting the service provider provide the tech blocking and tackling, but keeping your environmental subject matter experts in house, those ones that understand the context and what's important to your organization to respond to those threats. And we talked about that bring your own device type person at grandma's house trying to access a SaaS app and making sure you can still apply your security controls. So what is the journey? It's like you see that we've gotten very complex. You've got this distributed environment um, and we're going to modernize our networking and security infrastructure, but also tool sets that will allow us to automate and streamline uh, not only the network and security operations, but also your application development. We're going to go down that journey. And some of the concerns that we've helped customers with this journey have come up with in the past are things like, um, do we even know for sure what our current network and security infrastructure, how it's configured? Over time with troubleshooting and somebody puts in an application here and there, uh, do those configuration drifts and is your network even functioning as you thought it was? That's a concern we've helped customers get a handle on. Uh, being able to do what if scenarios, what if we this change is coming, what impact will it have on my network? We've all seen the major outages caused by not understanding the impact of changes or air changes on networks. And customers are also, we've helped them with all these manual tasks, uh, configuration management for your network devices and your routing and your firewalls. And then you have an outage and then you have to do root cause analysis of that outage and collect data from many locations. And then you have user experience troubleshooting. How many times have uh, large organizations throughout the day have a user having a poor Zoom or real-time experience with uh, Microsoft Teams? And then, so if your team is always bottled up dealing with those day-to-day -day issues, how can they work on the more important things? So we've helped customers deal with all these types of issues. And um, also, they say, well, it'd be great if you could help us with this, but we really just don't have the people right now. It's hard to find people. Um, if you're gonna wanna do a refresh throughout the globe, which we've helped many uh, Fortune 500 companies, they may have one particular company we helped at 2000 locations just in North America alone. And they wanted to refresh the network infrastructure with the wireless infrastructure, with the security infrastructure. And that's quite a project. And they just said, we can't, we don't have a big warehouse to store 40 pallets full of access points and then put them all together and ship them to all these locations. Um, but we've helped customers do that for over a decade now. And uh, that's something we're very proud of that's unique. Um, and then on that journey, um, how, how, do, how do we help? Who do we help and how do we help? And we've helped uh, many large enterprises, like I mentioned, and also the service provider world uh, with these big deployments, not only for their internal networks, but also uh, their customers. And we do this by augmenting uh, what you already have. So you take your in-house expertise, like we mentioned before, with your in-house project management and logistics knowledge of locations and environments. And we can handle the importer of record around the globe with all the different countries, uh, getting things staged, asset tagged, and project managed and getting those all deployed. Uh, that's been a big, big um, help to a lot of our customers. We have one large customer that uh, was using, uh, was one of the big carriers, I think it was Verizon, to monitor their network, but they they couldn't get to putting their, uh, doing their network deployment. So we do such a good job, they actually double paid, they paid us to get it in in a more timely fashion for them. So big projects like that, if you need help, uh, we're that kind of company. And um, again, we can provide the design, day zero type work, which is you know design and testing of, of concepts, network engineering people to do that, uh, deployment services, as well as we can help uh, staff your day-to-day -day network operational teams and security operational teams. And um, again, we just talked about our implement IT, which uh, you can check out on our website, but we've been doing that for 
but many of the company names you've heard of for, for years now and helping them get getting that infrastructure upgraded and deployed so you could focus on more important things and not something you do once every five or 10 years. Um, so it sounds like that's too good to be true, but uh, if you guys are interested in how do you get these jobs done, the day zero, the designing or the day one deployments, and, and you're looking for help, um, we can arrange an interview with uh, one of many clients who have been doing these services with for almost a decade now, some of them. And uh, Cintercom, just to give us some credibility, um, in North America, we were Juniper Network's overall partner of the year a couple of years ago. And uh, that was, we're pretty proud of that. That was with well, all the service that includes their service providers, their enterprises, uh, and even small to medium business. So we were their overall partner of the year in North America. It just, I think, tells you the kind of expertise we have that can help you understand those needs of your network and SecOps teams and architecture and put that into a solution that'll work for you and get it done when whatever, if you want to do it all yourself, that's fine. Or if you want to turn it over to us, that's fine. Um, also, as part of... Uh, that whole piece in the hybrid world. Uh, we help a lot of customers that uh, we just had a, one customer that had a, a security incident uh, that someone got into their network through a, a, one of their business partners. And um, we basically, they we don't do forensics, but we did come in after the fact and assess their status of their Azure and AWS environment and make recommendations uh, both for how to make sure that they have logging correct and they meet like CIS uh, top 18. So we can help them deploy that and analyze which of those settings would have the biggest impact in their environment. And uh, the way they deployed that is they took their DevOps environment and then they put all the, the controls in place to see what they were gonna break before they put it in uh, to a production environment. The things that we add, in addition to a lot, there's a lot of tools out there but those tools can't uh, understand things like compensated controls. Like you take all your logs and you're sending them to Microsoft Century or you're sending them to some similar MDR system that's also logging that, which now uh, could be a compensated control that would not be taken into account uh, when a tool like a content, a cloud security posture management tool uh, does uh, an analysis of the best practices for you. And we do these for some customers at one time or we do it as a continuous quarterly update, like we do some of the other services that we can do to help your customer company uh, maintain their effectiveness and their cost effectiveness of their operation. Um, as part of that, we also help with the hybrid cloud. Uh, it's a great example where a customer has a, a dev uh, department in um, Azure and they were having problems with people bypassing um, the controls they had to accessing their, their data in production. And so what we did is we created a zone uh, where that they can do all their dev work, but without having uh, sanctioned uh, UDR components, they were not allowed either with native controls to get policies with the native controls to get into uh, their production environment, or we can, another client had a similar situation where we put in this uh, basically gateway where now uh, they were using Palo Altos as the gateways to that if they didn't uh, have the rule sets in the Palo Altos, there's no way they're going to get out to that production data. And so that's uh, two ways that we can help uh, customers with the cloud. Now with your information security program, I think this is one of our newer offerings and something that uh, the industry is really uh, heading towards is how do you align your business risk or your risk assessment with your security program, whatever framework you're following there, and we can actually add in now uh, insurance company type financial impact modeling in that whole scenario. Um, a lot of companies still struggle with better ways to present uh, the state of their information security program uh, to leadership or to their board of directors, and also justify why, why am I investing in certain technologies or why do I have to make certain investments and uh, we can actually help with that, uh, with this offering we have, where we can tie uh, like, like the critical 18 controls, um, say uh, an investment in your identity and access management posture uh, might uh, lower your risk uh, much more than uh, maybe hardening your firewall rules. So that uh, they, they can actually do a some what if analysis out of there. Um, part of our, the other people that questions we've helped customers solve is with this tool is how do I know I have the right level of cyber insurance? 
Um, do I have a 24 hour reaction policy, a 48 hour? Uh, given the assets I have and the company size I am, um, do I have the right levels of insurance? And um, my information security program, like the banks, have we ever stress tested our program to find out where your program is going to break? So this is all kinds of valuable, valuable insight that um, we put into our, our, we call it our one SSP, our strategic security program, that we can help customers uh, take pieces they want uh, and do in house what they want. But now we can actually tie real financial impact uh, to your program. And um, the other question that you might get from like a board is, well, that's great at this point in time, but how do I keep a track of uh, what is happening in the market, the financial impact, how is it going to impact my risk, uh, possibly my insurance policies? That's another concern that um, some of our customers have had. Uh, how does this cyber risk financial exposure work? Again, we talk about aligning your risk, business risk with the risk assessment with your program. Uh, we see down there the, the areas we look at is what frameworks are you using? Are you using like the NIST CSF? Are you using the CIS top 18? Are you using the CRI version two? What type of framework are you building to? Uh, what about your company? We didn't know the locations of your company, the revenue, uh, their internet security profile. How much are they using the internet to do business with business partners? Uh, take all that and it gets baked uh, into uh, algorithms that um, basically take scoring of your program. So how good is your implementation and how mature is your implementation of any of those frameworks, as well as uh, the industry uh, insurance industry modeling that can be done, that we have a subscription that can apply that to these frameworks and your risk assessment, and then give you deliverables um, like board reporting on a quarterly basis. Uh, I'll justify investment prioritization and the ROI and the impact on your actual insurance levels and the amount of insurance you're gonna pay. Uh, very strategic information. Also, well, we can help um, because we are a very, a very technical company. It's been around for 30 years. Uh, we can help with the day zero, uh, which is your design of your refresh or your new met network. We can help with the deploy day one type of things. And we can actually do that very well because uh, we've also been a security bar for the last 20 years. So we help a lot of very large companies optimize um, their maintenance contracts, the equipment size they have. And so we can not, we are in a very good position. To, we use the third party that specializes in the insurance industry, but we leverage that with our ability to really correctly score your frameworks and then come out with um, a solution and really understanding what it's going to take to design, deploy, and operate those new controls or your, maybe retire some controls and the impact on your program. And then we can do all kinds of what-if analysis. If I don't do this, if I do do this, what does that do? How does that impact my insurance level requirements? Maybe if I open a new line of business, what impact does that have? So we can help you with all kinds of what-if modeling analysis, not only from the financial, but also the effectiveness of controls and what that would have to do with your insurance rates. And that summarizes it. This is a kind of an ugly slide, but it kind of talks about how we can play uh, those different roles for you. We can help you. We can use your risk assessment. We can validate it, do a gap analysis on your risk assessment, on your, on your controls, uh, frameworks, and then we can plug all those things in and do what-if analysis, but you can provide us frameworks. You can provide scores and we can plug it in and then we can just give you a quick analysis or you can do a real deep uh, what if modeling. And we have many happy customers that uh, have actually saved money by being able to show they've gone through uh, this testing and uh, really helps make the insurance companies feel uh, much better about insuring uh, these operations. And um, we've talked a lot about designing the infrastructure for network security in the cloud, but we can also help with information assurance, um, tying together uh, requirements for assessing and validating um, what you have. So we um, there's global intelligence that we apply, which is things like the cybersecurity infrastructure agency. Uh, we know things like any kind of password system. Uh, generally, they can uh, enforce length or complexity, but they can't do length and complexity. So you see down there a lot of things like password one, two, three, and four. Um, so we can, we help with all those things in the red teaming. We help customers uh, and purple teaming. We do uh, reconnaissance via our 
Synercom, we call it our attack surface management platform, which we can use throughout a whole infrastructure refresh to make sure that we're not creating any liabilities you're not be aware of. We can assess your APIs, your users. Uh, we can do all kinds of attacks and then work with your security teams to, and purple teaming exercises to tune your controls as we're deploying that new infrastructure. And we also um, do password analysis. We find a lot of organizations, they have 20,000 passwords and they'll find out 20,000 users and they'll have uh, 200 users with password one, two, three, four explanation point or company name, bang, one bang explanation. And then they can, that's obviously a big vulnerability since most people get in through accounts that already exist. So once they have one, they might have 20 of them now or 200 ways to get in. So we, we provide all this information uh, assessment services. And um, as part of the uh, seminar we're doing here today, we're offering out a free uh, attack surface management subscription um, that can also be paired with our human pen testing. A tool can only do so much. We also have the humans. Uh, we've been doing pen testing for over 10 years and uh, we're well known in the industry for that as well as uh, we have a password analysis that we're offering a, a buy three, get one free for an annual subscription that we do a lot in the financial industry and the healthcare industry. So we really have that full service offering on the build the infrastructure, uh, secure the infrastructure, and also understand the financial impact of that infrastructure.